my name is Roseanne Supernault and I will be beginning this video by performing a monologue by the character Helena in the Shakespearean play A Midsummer Night's Dream. So. <laughs> How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius think not so. He will not know what all but he do know. As he airs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I admiring of his qualities. Things base and vile and holding no quantity. Love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. And therefore, he is winged Cupid painted blind? Or hath love's mind of any judgment taste, wings and no eyes figure on heady haste? And therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled. As waggish boys and game themselves for a swear, so the boy love is just perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looking upon Hermia's eyes. He had hailed down oaths that he was only mine. When this hail some heat from Hermia felt, and so he dissolved in showers of oaths did melt. tell him about Bermia's flight. And then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And if for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense, but herein mean I to enrich my pain. To have a sight thither and back again. Hi, my name is Roseanne Supernault, and I am an actress, producer, director, writer, uh, artist of many sorts. I'm mostly known as an actress. I'm known for various other things such as public speaking, youth work, uh, being a social media presence, and also an activist. Uh, I, in my spare time, also am an astrologer, uh, which is a funny, interesting little tidbit about me. I am very happy to be here and I'm excited that I was asked to present this video. I have spent many years traveling across Canada and I've done some workshops in the States as well, but working mostly in Canada as an acting teacher. And it is one of my great passions is to sort of hand the torch off to other performers and other artists regardless of their age. I do work with youth a lot, but I will work with uh, actors and and uh, performers of those sorts for acting, etc. I just I get a lot of students who who like to dance, who like to sing, etc, but my focus is teaching and training with acting. Um Typically in my teaching, I will focus on theater and also on uh, film and TV. Now, before we get to that though, I want to start with some roots and some basics. So I, I am a, a traditional Cree Métis woman. I am Métis from the Cree tribe. I was raised in Northern Alberta in East Prairie Métis settlement. So I grew up in the bush. I was in a city too. My cousins in the bush would call me a city slicker. And uh, my friends in the city would tease me because I was super bushed out. So I kind of lived just both worlds, had a foot in each world, which was an interesting upbringing to say the least. Let's talk about you and let's talk about why you're here. Uh, I want to thank uh, Arts Can Connect for uh, having me here, Connect, sorry, plural. And you can plug into the Arts Can Connects uh, community by using the hashtag Arts Can Connects. So that will be what I will also be plugging in my videos. Let's start with why you might be here and why you might be interested in watching this video in the first place. 
Um, I think that maybe you are someone who watches TV, watches shows. I mean, we are living in the time of the Netflix binge culture. And there hasn't, I don't, I don't think there's been a greater time to be a storyteller. I don't, I don't think that there has been a better time, um, a more prolific or auspicious time to tell a story where you can reach so many eyeballs, so many minds, so many people where you can transform yourself in such a specific and beautiful way because not only is this a special time for people to get bitten by the acting bug and to start to pursue that art and that craft, um, it's that times are changing and it's an exciting time to plug into the arts community. It's an exciting time to tell the stories that are happening. I mean, especially given the fact that this is 2020 and, and we are living through an incredible year where so many stories can come out of who we are and what we are doing just in this time alone, just in this time in this year, there is so much that can be birthed from the energy of 2020. And if you are thinking, hmm, it's the middle of a pandemic. I don't know if this is the time to tell stories, but it is because our ancestors didn't stop telling stories just because things got tough. The story has been part of, if you're indigenous, awesome, but there's some indigenous teachings that I naturally bring with me when I come out to work with students. And um, growing up traditionally and growing up around ceremony and anyone who has had a foot in that life being a great orator, being a great speaker, being someone who can speak publicly, who can share story is so vital and important right now. We need younger people to have a resurgence of spirit so that they are holding the stories that they're going to bring forth in, in maintaining and preserving our traditions through oral traditions. And when we, you know, I don't know why this is coming up right now, but this is how I teach my classes. It's, it's, you know, I, I don't plan everything. I just say, you know, creator, what will you have me say? What will you have me do? And creator knows best what the people who are watching and observing want to learn and want to know. Um, but traditionally and in ceremony, there is story. Story is life ultimately the way that our mind works generally speaking is we have a beginning we have a middle we have an end we tell stories we correlate story to every experience that we've had in our life if i asked you right now tell me your earliest memory some people might just quickly say i was uh, riding to the store with my mom some people might go into a little more detail uh, some people um, can't say yes or no. They have to tell a story. <laughs> I'm one of those people, and anyone who went to high school with me and grew up with me knows you can't just get a yes or no answer from Rose, uh, what my friends call me, Rose. You're always going to get a story. Um, but generally speaking, story is life, and story is incredibly important it is the way that we see the world around us and to me it is so intimate it is so fundamental and i think basic isn't necessarily a negative thing i think simplicity is beautiful and that is one of the most simple and beautiful things about the life that we have in the world that we live in is that we tell story we share story. Maybe a reason that you're here is you feel a connection to storytelling. You watch the shows on Netflix and you're like, man, I can do that. <laughs> and you can, you can. That is the great thing 
about acting is that yes, you can do it. You can do it. It, and it is so fun and it is a wild ride. So, um, without further ado, and we're gonna start with the basics, like a ballet class, we're gonna take it back to the bar. Okay, so the reason that I teach in this way is that in, let me give you some of my background. Um, I am a classically and modern trained thespian. I am someone who anchors themselves in theater and stage. Um, it's my home, it's where I come from, so it's a lot of what I teach. I think that some of the strongest actors and performers are people who have at least trained in theater and continue to train in theater while they do film and TV, or at least have a background in it. In my opinion, I'll be completely frank, those are the strongest storytellers who I have ever worked with. Please do not get duped into the world of, you need to pay an agent two grand a month, and you need to come to our school and use our photographer for $5,000 a month. Why am I using quotes right now? But please don't fall for that. Take it from um, a, a successful professional actress who has worked with like name actors and traveled overseas to do TV shows. I didn't do any of that. Let's get into the training part. <laughs> I think I've done a lot of talking at this point. I, I, I want to get you to a point where you are not focused on the words, okay? So let's say you're kind of a beginning or intermediate actor and hopefully you'll sort of understand um, that you're gonna have to audition. You're gonna, there's all this like language and stuff that goes with it that I'm not gonna get into. That's like a full workshop series. I just wanna get into the fundamental basics of acting. I wanna get you back to the bar. This is when the ballet dancer is at the bar and she's doing she's doing her plies just over and over, you know, and her glisse is like over and over and her so that is the fundamental basics and the movements of anything that has to do with that dance. Now, as an actor, it's as simple as this. And this is like trade secret. This is something that I've done and loved for a long time. And I want to tell you, acting is as simple as reading aloud. That's it. That's all. It's the basic, fundamental technique of looking at words on a page and pulling them up into an audience. So, let's say you're just starting out. You don't even know what this acting thing is about. You've never been to a play. You don't, you know, but you want to be an actor or you're just, you know, doing it for fun. Who cares? The first thing I'm going to say to you as a teacher, as your, as your teacher right now, just grab a book, any book. This is a play. It's a wonderful play. It doesn't have to be anything special at all. You can pick up sunscreen. <laughs> Daily protective skin moisturizer with hyaluronic acid complex for face, hands, and body. That's it, that's acting, that's it. And you don't have to pay me $5,000 to learn that. You don't have to pay me $2,000 to learn that. You walk in a room and do that, you're gonna book it. I'm serious, this, half of this game is confidence. Half of what you're doing, making it as an actor, it has to do with confidence. Sorry, I don't mean to get like <laughs> schmoozy. Um, but that is the simplicity of acting. Next time you're in the bathroom and you're sitting there for a while, I don't know why you're sitting there for a while, but you're sitting there for a while. Just pick up, pick up some shampoo, pick up some face wash, shea butter. Now, do you notice what I'm doing though? I'm looking away from it. <laughs> I just went cross-eyed. Shea butter. I'm not going shea butter shea butter okay this is a fundamental technique that is gonna make the difference between you booking something and not booking something if you walk into a room and you do this 
I'm celebrating because I've got a friend who tells me all the things that ought to be told me. Mm, I don't want to watch you on TV. And the casting director knows that no one wants to watch that on TV. <laughs> and the, you'd probably get fired. <laughs> you don't want that. <laughs> this, I'm celebrating because I've got a friend who tells me all the things that ought to be told me. So that, that requires practice, that requires reading aloud. It's that simple. And there's a further nuanced technique that I'm not going to get too much into. It was taught to me by my wonderful acting coach, Neil Shell, who learned it. I don't know where he learned it from. I can't quite remember. Oh, yes, there's a book that I would love you, for you to read. It's called How to Stop Acting by Harold, Harold Guskin or Gaskin. I think I'll write it to Arts Can Connect so that they can put it down below. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a book that I would love to recommend to you guys. It's a fantastic book on acting and it's all about this concept of taking it off the page. Um, there's a lot of things that get taught about acting where people can feel like they're getting lost in it all and it starts to get Trust me, it starts to get really over the top and like melodramatic and like a lot, a lot of techniques and a lot of different ideas and a lot of different concepts. Take it from someone who has done this professionally for 17 years. My math's not that great. 17 years. And I was doing it before that too. That's just the professional part. Trust me. Trust me. I make TV shows. I make movies. I do it all the time. Get back to the basics. Get back to the bar. Just open a book, find something near you, read it aloud. Simple. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, silly. Now, the next part is kind of funny. Um, <clears throat> I wanna talk about the monologue and I wanna talk about story. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about song, interestingly enough. I'm not technically a musician, but I like to sing in the shower and I like to sing in the car. And there's something that I think that music has a lot to offer an actor in terms of teaching, in terms of learning. Poetry, I would say as an actor, read poetry. Read a lot of poetry. Because it's about the feeling. It's about the heart. They, they want to see intimacy. They want to see a real, human being with with depth at the end of their end of the camera you want to at least bring a flavor of that you don't have to get too melodramatic but you want to bring some flavor of that now um what i want to talk about next that was the very 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 basic okay let's just move into the next part um I, we're definitely into the 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 meat and potatoes of it all and if you're going to practice every day this is what i would say to practice about okay so the first thing that you need to do and it's this simple I know it sounds silly but this is how I book Blackstone which oh, rocketeered SpaceX my career that's what I was doing every day for an hour reading aloud it sounds simple, it sounds basic, but it's the fundamental work that you do as an actor. And when you go, let's just say you're not doing plays and let's say you move into the territory of film and television, okay? And you walk into any room. Uh, when I first auditioned for, um, let's just say when I was young and I was doing auditions, one of the first challenges I learned was that sometimes you're in an audition and you're auditioning for one role. While you're there, the casting director looks at you and is like, hmm, you have the perfect look for this other role, but you didn't spend seven hours the night before memorizing the text. So they hand you sides and they say, you want to take that out for a minute? Just have a look at it and come back in and read it for me. When you practice reading aloud, looking at a page, I'm celebrating because I've got a friend who tells me all the things that ought to be told me. If a casting director did that to me tomorrow, that's what I would do. And I have booked roles using that technique, okay? 
Um, so that's that. I'm just gonna leave it at that. It's the simplicity of of being light on your toes because that happens in casting sessions where they say, "Hey, can you take a look at this?" And you don't want to go from like this great performance to I'm celebrating because I've got you know. It's like ah. Uh. <laughs> so the monologue. Uh, the monologue is a fantastic way to move into the next step which is getting rid of the words, getting out of your head and getting into your body. Uh, one of the main questions that I get from actors who I work with is, um, how do I stop seeing the words in front of my eyes during the audition? You'd be surprised how many actors struggle with this. And you might notice in your journey in becoming an actor, that um, this is one of the things that you will suffer through and struggle with. And no judgment because I was there for many years. It was like I would be acting and I would be like, why am I seeing my sides in my eyeballs in front of my head? And it would take me out of the moment. It would take me out of the scene. It would take me out of whatever I was doing. So um, one way that I wanna help the student who is watching this video uh, get out of the words and into the moment is a simple concept. Um, when I was younger, I used to make a lot of mixtapes. I would sit around at home and I would learn the lyrics of songs. And I would, I, I, what I used to do, and I don't recommend this for any of my students, as soon as I get students, I say, stop writing your words down on paper because that's a memorization technique. You're just putting the word to mind. You're not putting the story in your body. You're not bringing the story into your being. And then you become a, a, a regurgitator of words, which is not what the craft is about. So when you're working with the words and you wanna get them, so if I have any actors out, right, out there who are going through this right now, this is what I have to offer you. So let's say we take a song, <clears throat> like, <laughs> A song, not a lot though. Um, one of the songs that has such a great story connected to it that I love, so cheesy but so good, is Picture by Kid Rock, Sheryl Crow. And I don't have the lyrics in front of me. I think I remember most of it like, been living my life in a slow hell, different girl every night at the hotel. I'm not a singer, but whatever. I ain't seen the sun shine in three damn days. Okay, so, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to just like kid rock you guys like that, but let's take it to, let's, let's just, you know, think about it. Been living my life in a slow hell. Now the music is giving us emotion. Now let's get back to the words and let's keep the emotion but let's let go of the tune. Can you breathe? So I'll let you know what I'm going through right now, okay? Just as a learning exercise, I'm breathing, I'm grounded, I'm connected to my body, and I'm in my intuition. This is not an intellectual process. This is me feeling something in my being and my body. <clears throat> Been living my life in a slow hell. Different girl every night at the motel. I ain't seen the sun shine in three damn days. So it's a little wonky. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see how I'm connecting? When I did that just now, I didn't see words in front of my eyes. Okay, now let's go through it again. And this is take any song, any song. Do this with any song. It's great if it has a great story to it, but you could literally take any song and do this, okay? It's, it's... <sighs> 
been living my life in a slow hell. Different guy every night at the motel. I ain't seen the sunshine in three damn days. Like I could take that into an audition, you know? So, so what we're doing is, and, and when I, so when I was there and I was present and I, w I was in that moment, the number one thing is you want to ground yourself, ground yourself while you're acting. Okay. Um, you want to be in your body. You don't want to be in your head. You don't want to be seeing words like in front of your eyeballs. You don't want to be just regurgitating. You want to feel something. You want to have heart. You want to have soul. You want to bring something to the table because casting directors are watching hundreds of actors every day. And they see the same lines every day and they're casting assistants and they're casting associates. So when you, when you're coming into that room or you're sending that tape in, you got to remember that, that at the end of the day, they want to see something real. They want to feel something. And I will say to any actor who is struggling with having those words, like, and you know what I'm talking about, you've seen it. You have those words, like going, you're like doing a scene and you're like, why can't I stop seeing these words? When I was in that moment, I didn't see the words. I didn't see been living my life in a slow hell, different girl, guy, every night at the hotel, motel, I ain't seen, and it's not even about the words. Is it a hotel? Is it a motel? I don't remember right now, but I don't care. It's not all about the words. If you go back to my monologue that I performed at the beginning of this video, I'm talking really fast right now and I apologize. I get excited when I teach. You can rewatch this though and take notes. Um, but if you go back to my initial monologue and if you took Midsummer Night's Dream, um, there's not, it's not gonna be word perfect. And in fact, mine is a different revision anyways, because I learned the play with a certain director who, who cut out certain things and who, you know what I mean? It's not all about the words. It's not just about words. It's more than that. It's about your soul. It's about depth. It's about feeling. It's about truth. If you allow yourself to be present in the moment, if you breathe, if you connect with your body, shut your mind off, shut the phone off, really sink into yourself. You can bring so much truth, it's not even funny. And I think that that's really what gets you a gig and gets you seen by an audience. Now, the great thing about this weird little practice of mine is I love music and I love songs anyway. I'll sit there and just learn lyrics anyway because I love music. And how I hope that this can work for you is hopefully you love music and you have some favorite songs of yours. And I want you to make this correlation between artists, okay? Because a lot of actors, for whatever reason, um, they get kind of lazy. They don't like to practice. They don't actually, a lot of actors don't exactly like the craft as much as many people would think. Um, and that's okay. No judgment, no judgment. If you're doing it, you just want to book the work, book the work. That's fine. That's fine. But I'm just saying, and I prefer to teach my students, musicians will practice for an hour a day. A musician will grab a gu their guitar and they will practice for an hour in a day, uh, an hour a day because they love it. And to achieve mastery, so to speak, requires 10,000 hours of practice. Now, I, I, I want to add just like a spiritual aspect to that because I am, I am Cree. I'm, I believe that our souls come here with gifts too. So it's not to say that you don't have gifts and you weren't born with gifts. It doesn't mean you need 10,000 hours. I'm just saying it's a good idea if you want to do this daily living your life as an artist it's a good idea to practice an hour a day um, because there is that spirit that a lot of people are born with and they just have it and that's okay too um, but what I am saying is that practice is really great and it's really handy and it helps and um, 
but I kind of forgot what I was saying, but I do encourage my students to practice for one hour a day. And before you, you know, start small, uh, take a monologue or start with the songs, start with the song concept, because you're just looking at taking the words out of it and feeling something. So the next time you listen to a song that you really like, just don't think about the words, but start to visualize what that story is that they're telling. Okay. Um, I ain't seen the sunshine in three damn days. Like when I was doing that, I saw myself in a hotel. There was a naked guy laying in a bed, covered up, you know, with sheets. We'll keep it PG-13. And I was, you know, hung over. And I pulled the curtains back and my eyes were like, like, that's what I was feeling. I was like feeling this like light shining on me. And I was just at rock bottom. Like that's the imagery that was coming to my mind that my intuition was bringing in that moment. I wasn't sitting there, like I said, seeing the words and that takes practice. That's what I'm saying. This practice of reading aloud or listening to music and connecting with song and story, it can take you out of that place. Just try it for yourself, try it for yourself. And again, I'll say this again, um, stop. Stop writing the words down on a paper, trying to memorize it. That's something they teach in high school. So we can regurgitate, or in school, so we regurgitate the information. That's not your role as an actor. Your role as an actor is not to regurgitate information. Your role as an actor is to present truth, is to become present in the moment and let the truth of the story come through you. You are a conduit. You, you are a vessel for something greater beyond you. And um, if you're seeing the words and if you're so focused and stuck on the words, you got to get out of your head. You got to get into your body. You got to ground yourself. Um, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope that helps you guys, that part anyways. Um, so, yeah, great. Thank you guys for watching this video. You can follow me on my social media. I have an Instagram, a Facebook, and a Twitter. Just search R Supernault on Instagram, uh, R S U P E R N A U L T, or Google me, and my social medias will pop up. And I'd appreciate any inboxes or anything like that. Just you know, share, comment, like, and subscribe. Also to Arts Can Connects. Uh, plug, uh, type in their hashtag to plug into the community online and. Thank you so much for watching. I feel very inspired and happy and excited right now. So yeah, take care guys. Thank you so much. Remember, practice, practice, practice every day. Okay, awesome. Uh, check out these techniques, try them out for yourself and feel free to message me on any of my social media platforms. I would love to hear feedback and hear if any of this helped you guys on your acting journey. Thank you so much. Take care. Hi, hi. Thanks.